Hi everyone, it's Jan from Jan Plans Things and welcome to my plan with me video for this week. So I'm following on from my Studio Ghibli, <laughs> someone told me I was saying it all wrong, um, Studio Ghibli um, spreads from last week and I thought I'd do something a bit similar to the front cover so that you guys could kind of see in a little bit slower motion um, what I was um, doing. So I've started off by doing the pencil work first and I I've just always, I think I'll do this more often where I've done the pencil work beforehand before I start filming just to just to give more time for the video with Joe because I also find that you can't see most of it when I'm putting it down and then after that I'm using the Pentel pocket brush pen to go through and do the line work and I'm really enjoying using this pen nowadays I'm getting a lot more control from it and I like it because of the variation that it gives in the line work and every now and again I will switch over to the Sakura Micron pen when I need more control um, what I'm doing now is I've got the little paper towel underneath my hand because um, I tend to draw quite fast so um, sometimes the ink hasn't um, dried yet so the paper towels just to um, stop it from smudging everywhere and um, yeah so sometimes I switch to the Sakura Micron pen but the problem with that is I find that the Micron doesn't have as much variation in line so there's a little bit more work required in order to make it um, more interesting and normally you can do that with like hatching or um, varying the types of pen you're using so you can backline it to make it thicker but I find that if I'm trying to go a little bit faster I'll try and just use the pencil pock brush pen but because it doesn't have as much control as the Micron um, for stuff like this, the small details around the eyes and also the little castle on the sky at the back, um, I find it easier just to go back to the Micron. But I also don't want to hatch too much because I'm planning on painting it afterwards. So I'm just going to go back over it with the Pentel Pocket Brush and just like, um, and just darken it a little bit and still keep that variation within the line work. So, um, with, um, with this type of um, drawing, I've realized that it's mostly brown from the reference pictures. So I'm going to try and vary it by adding highlights, even though most of the painting is going to be the same um, thickness. And I'm actually quite pleased with how this one was working out. And um, I guess the thing is, I wouldn't have been able to do something like this a year ago because I just didn't have the confidence um, in terms of painting because I'm much more comfortable drawing with pen and like a Copic marker compared to drawing with something like this. And um, I'm finding that nowadays that I've improved a lot more. Um, I'm more happy to take on challenges like this in um, in my drawings. Um, I've had a lot of you guys ask me how long it takes to do a spread. And on average, it takes me 40 minutes. I think this one took a little bit longer. I think um, uh, if I looked at all the footage, it's running at around 45 to 50 minutes. Um, but a little bit of that time does involve me just going outside and just waiting for some paint to dry in between layers. So after I've made sure that it has dried there, I'm just going through and just rubbing out some excess um, pencil work with the um, with the razor. And I'm just nowadays I'm using like the brush just to brush off the excess rubbings because I find it easier to remove the um, the rubbings from the in the, from the center of the spine. And I mentioned this briefly in my plan with me video um, last week for my overall September one. But what I'm doing now is I'm using a mixture of um, ultramarine and and yellow ochre, which creates a lovely um, uh, bluish gray color or a paints gray sometimes. And um, I use and I use this color just to lay down the tones of the painting first. So I find that because it's like quite a neutral looking um, a neutral looking gray, you can paint over it afterwards and retail still retain some of the shadows. So I've enjoyed. Um, Doing this technique recently because it helps me um, see the, um, the depth of the drawing first to see whether or not there's more detail required and it also gives me like a little bit of shadow to the drawing when I do the first color washes over so it doesn't look so flat so I do I do quite like doing this one and I've been following a couple of um, videos on Skillshare where this has been mentioned so I've given it a try oh, Speaking of which, if you do want to try Skillshare, I've got a two um, two month free uh, trial for the premium. If you want to use my link, and I'll just put that in the bio for you. 
But so after I put the grey um, the grey paint down, I'm just going over it with a, a blend of browns to um, just just to colour in the part of the castle because most of the artwork from the castle was like it's all it's all very very brown. I think it was because it's quite an old movie, so there wasn't as much distinction for this object, which was most of the time in the background with the um, the characters being more important. So um, I've just gone through and I've added brown to that, and then I'm dabbing a little bit of green to the top of it, and the green seems to sit on top of the brown a lot more so it pushes the brown to the side and um, I find that quite nice because it kind of gives that kind of glowy look um, with the with the top of the off top of the building to the grain and I was a bit worried here that there was enough definition but it was okay because I think afterwards what I'll do is I'll go back and then just darken um, a few of the portals and the shadows with a thinner brush so um, after after that I'm just using, I'm dipping the paintbrush directly into the pan to get the really dark colours. And at the top of the castle, I've noticed they had a little inkling of um, like terracotta tiled roofs, so I put those on the top. Um, if anyone's using my drawing as a reference to draw the castle in the sky, I really do not recommend it because I was kind of just like making it up as I went along and kind of just like an average of what I thought it would look like. Um, and now I've got, um, and now I'm just doing a little wash of green. So I've only got a bluish green in my pan of, of watercolors. And that's because I find that you can mix really nice varied greens by using just a base green plus um, variations of yellow and blue with it. I tend to just mix it with the quinacridone gold every time if I want to um, make the green a little bit deeper. So that's how I'm doing the wash for the trees. So I'm just going through and I did the wash over the top with the grey shadow still showing through underneath. And then I'm going back and um, with a thicker colour, I'm just darkening the bottom of the tree just to give that that extra shadow. And it is running a little bit into the brown at this point because I'm, I'm moving quite quickly. I'm not letting the layers dry. And I'm okay with that because I find that I do like the blending in between the colours of the um, of the of the watercolours. And um, in all the reference pictures that I could find of the giant robot, they're always, um, he's always brown, 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 and, and green. So I was actually hoping that I could make him a bit grayer so he stands out against the castle a little bit. But um, at this point I was like, okay, no, I'm going to be ac as accurate as I can to the art. So I've actually painted the top part of him brown. He bleeds a little bit into a, um, a more desaturated brown towards the bottom of his really, really long arms. And I think he's kind of cute as a robot. I remember seeing like a giant version of this when I visited the, the museum in Japan a couple of years ago. So, um, but I can see at this point the head of the robot is blending into the castle. So what I'll do is I'll try and define it a little bit with um, darker colors and then go through and paint it with a little bit of white to add that definition around the edges. And I'm just like going through at the moment, you can see with the, a much thicker brown and just like um, just adding a little bit of depth to the overall painting. I've picked some um, little butterflies because I found that he was like a little gentle robot. He was picking up flowers and butterflies butterflies in the movie so I got a little butterflies holding up the little discs um, which would be the dates for this week's um, this week's layout and um, I, I like I like this is basically my go-to layout nowadays where I have like a central artwork and then just the sides to do the notes and I kind of really like using this one because it means that I get to have a little bit of fun with the layouts as I go and um, I'm also going to go through and put a little wash of blue and you could just see I just went back there with the brush to pick up the excess paint because the paper was starting to buckle a little bit but I do find the LT very good for this type of watercolor um, and a lot of you have asked me whether or not it's enough for me just to have this um, this as my weekly the whole time but I do have extra pages in between my weeklies to do notes and other um, and other things and I find that in my weekly what I use it mostly for is to put the big tasks so I can it's kind of like my master list and any details and meeting notes I have um, I have extra pages or I even have like this junk notebook that I leave on my desk um, just in case anyone wants to write me any notes that I have to write into this pretty journal um, and that's good because this is kind of like my master list of everything that I need to do during the week and it's great because I put any like important things or legal phone calls or anything like that um, so that it's all recorded in here and yeah, I find I'm using a white um, gouache 
um, to, put, uh, to do the little highlights on the robot and I found that really really helped to make the overall picture pop so I'm kind of really happy with how that turned out you kind of sometimes you just don't know until the very end and there's like a little bit of relief and you're like it kind of works out so I was, I was pretty pleased with that um, and to, to finalize it I'm just going through and just adding a little bit more shadows but I think at this point um, you just stop touching it because sometimes I just keep drawing on it until it's just a little bit too much but I think um, I think I managed to draw a line at a good point here and I'm just using the um, the 01 micron again just to do the little numbers and the bubbles I didn't want to color it in black this time because I didn't want them to overpower the drawing which I thought was nice and soft and after that I'm just gonna put like really small um, really small letters for the week um, the weekdays and once again I combine um, Saturday and Sunday into one and yeah that's it um, for this layout this week I hope you guys enjoyed um, watching me do that and um, Ghibli's been hard but I've really been enjoying it so I'll see you guys next time thanks bye